Okay, th thank you very much for the introduction. Great to be here. And Rob, also thank you for that uh, previous presentation because as a, uh, an ex-research uh, agronomist, uh, the tech techno-commercial stuff is just fantastic. I, uh, I, uh, I love the great work that's being done with new products, uh, but it's, uh, it's also clear that over the last 20 uh, to 25 years, it's been so much harder, and I think that was uh, shown clearly in that presentation. So, so I wanted to have a change of pace, so move from the... Uh, the um, gritty uh, kind of uh, practical hands-on front-end stuff and talk, uh, tell you a corporate story. And I wasn't sure if this would be of interest to uh, the audience, but I'll move through pretty quickly. And it's the, uh, the story of, uh, of, uh, of elders uh, of the previous uh, five or six years. Uh, and I think uh, many of you have been uh, very aware of what's been happening uh, with the elders' business over that period as it uh, got into trouble and then uh, hopefully uh, we're on our way out of trouble. So the way I, I thought I'd approach it with the topic of uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow was to uh, talk a bit about the uh, background, the business model as, um, as elders as a pure play, um, the eight-point plan, which has been a, a critical part of the uh, turnaround, but more on the eight-point plan, I just want to talk about how we developed it. Uh, because one of the key points there is we got rid of all external consultants and went back to the people with experience and knowledge in our business and developed a, a plan which is a practical plan for success. And I think that applies uh, broadly across all of our businesses. Talk about priorities and then a little bit about uh, the opportunities in horticulture. Uh, I'll, um, I'll go through very, very quickly and it, it, it is the story. So uh, happy to take questions if there are specific details at the end, but I really just want to tell the story uh, of uh, the change. So starting with uh, 2008, so uh, the business was uh, called Futurus, that, uh, the, the uh, Futurus uh, business was renamed Elders with a stroke of genius because the idea was that uh, all of the bad reputational legacy issues that F Futurus had, we could transfer to an iconic brand Elders. So I think that was the game plan at the time. Uh, but so Futurus um, was a business, a uh, multi-business uh, industrial conglomerate. So it had uh, forestry, automotive, uh, the um, car parts, uh, had a fine china business, had wool, manuf uh, wool processing, multiple businesses and elders was within that business. Uh, at the, uh, as an ex-West Farmers uh, uh, CEO, I, uh, I always think of the Futurus model, and given that it came out of Western Australia as well, as very similar to a West Farmers thinking, so multi-businesses, but of course West Farmers always had the uh, financial discipline, significant financial discipline. And the time when I was running Landmark and CSBP, I mean, the, all of the policies that were applied to me with my chairman, who was Mike Cheney at the time, was 18% return on capital. So IT policy, 18%. Innovation policy, 18%. HR policy, 18%. So it was all around financial discipline. And when you're running uh, disparate businesses like this, you have to have a common language. And I think it's something that's part of Elder's turnaround, the common language of what we're talking about. In 2016, uh, we're a, uh, a pure play um, agricultural business. So back, back to the roots of Elder's from uh, years gone past. So when we look at the, the journey, uh, just for, for the story, we break it into three, uh, three distinct phases. Uh, the first being uh, 2008. See, in the first phase, if there was a phone call like that, it would be the banks telling us that they were going to pull all our funding. <laughs> and we would have been really, really scared. And it actually, I was thinking when I was listening to the uh, earlier, the uh, Rob's presentation, the, the correlations between agronomy and corporate life uh, and my transition, because we still have sucking pests in corporate life. <laughs> and that, was, uh, that, that would have been the banks at that time. I, uh, j just while I'm on the subject, I always tell the story of when I became chairman of Elders, because I was a director before I became uh, chairman, uh, and then I was demoted to be CEO. But uh, at the point of being uh, chairman, I remember sitting with all the banks uh, when we were in Bad Bank, and uh, they, uh, the picture I painted was six banks all with straws in our throat, sucking blood out, and the most learned of them says, uh, we're a bit worried, you're looking a bit pale. You need to work harder. <laughs> so, so that was the time, F, uh, FY08 to FY13, survival. $1.2 billion of debt uh, in bad bank, uh, cutting costs, selling assets, trying to get back, and, and all the pink shirts in the audience uh, will probably remember deeply that time. 
It, it was a, yeah, a terrible time. And sadly, as tends to happen when you have corporates running businesses without a lot of ag experience, the first thing you cut uh, is marketing, communications, all the discretionary stuff, agronomic services, because that's just discretionary. That's not that important, really. All your research, your innovation. And so it was a very, very sad period uh, uh, in the business. Uh, FY13 to FY15, uh, the turnaround, uh, and uh, we, uh, there were some fundamental changes, and I'll talk a little bit about the Aplin plan as we go through. But uh, we went back to being a pure play agribusiness. So uh, the reason we did that was because Rural Co offered us, uh, didn't offer us enough money to buy us. So we, uh, we took the pragmatic view of staying in business and becoming an ag business. And uh, at that point, uh, that's when I became chairman, and we started to reset with the team on how we were running the business. Uh, we developed the Apple and Plan, and we, uh, we put in uh, directors, appointed directors, that were uh, ag-based, uh, deep experience, financially strong, and values-based. So really basic 101 stuff. And then through the growth period, uh, FY16, as we are going forward, and I'll talk a bit about that, the, uh, one of the acknowledgements of the turnaround was uh, Elders winning the uh, large company turnaround of the year last year, which we were very proud of until <coughs> someone told me that the people who won it the year before were Dick Smith. So, <laughs> so, so, so I, I always like staying grounded, <laughs> so, so that was quite helpful. <laughs> So in terms of Elves today, uh, what is the business? Um, obviously an iconic brand. Uh, through all the bad times, the brand uh, was written down on a balance sheet to $5 million, so a brand that's been around 177 years, 1,800 uh, employees, uh, 440 uh, points of presence across uh, Australia, Indonesia, uh, China and Vietnam. Uh, board management, the deep agribusiness experience, a small board, and I know that that's always very, very helpful to have a small board, uh, and uh, a stable growth platform. And, and now at a stage where can, we can reinvest in helping uh, our clients in a much bigger way uh, with, uh, with services, with products, with innovation, and uh, in, in other ways. So the, the business model, uh, we've simplified and clarified the business model compared to how it was. Uh, five key areas of the business, the, the retail products business with our farm inputs and, uh, and, um, and fertiliser. An interesting uh, uh, approach that we've taken, and that is that we, uh, we've just taken the very strong decision, and it's probably a bit from my background of having run a few of the companies, but uh, of not competing with our suppliers, so not backward integrating, working closely with our key suppliers like Dow, etc., and, uh, and working in close partnership as opposed to uh, a number of our competitors that are, uh, have taken an approach of having a bid each, each way. So buying, uh, competing with their own brands as well as uh, relying on the suppliers. Our sense is that it's a long game. Our turnaround, our survival was based on so much support from our su key suppliers, so much invisible support, uh, silent support where, uh, where we were given favours and, and assistance at the worst of times. And so we're, so we're, uh, we're very well or, or strongly into long-term partnerships where you do give and take over time. The agency services business with uh, livestock, uh, real estate, wool and grain, uh, and uh, all relatively low capital businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. The way the eight-point plan has been developed is that uh, we're, we're chasing a return on capital which is uh, significantly higher than our weighted average cost of capital, so just basic maths, so that we create significant shareholder value. And therefore, in our agronomic services, agency services, financial services, it's, it's quite strong return on capital. Financial services, we've got uh, our banking distribution business, insurance uh, uh, business, financial planning business, and also home loan business. Uh, feed and processing services, uh, which is our, our feed lot, abattoir, two, two feed lots, abattoir in, uh, in uh, Bogor and outside J Jakarta. And our branded beef business, and sorry, meat business in China, uh, uh, Indonesia, and Vietnam and the live export business, which I'm <coughs> happy to take a question or two on at the end uh, if we're talking about social licence. The, the other uh, point when you look through the business model is uh, the online platforms, and uh, I'll talk about it very quickly because of time. I have a slide at the end on our, uh, our, um, our uh, online community where we have direct imp input from our client base on things that we want to do. And so there's a quick slide, but I'll do it very quickly for the sake of time. So when you look at the business model, um, it's, you know, we've got multiple products and services, multiple business models, uh, we've got multiple geographies, and, uh, and there's also multiple channels uh, that we're targeting on. So, so what we've tried to do is simplify and crystallise, and uh, our anchor at one end are our clients, so everything is client-based, and the anchor at the other end are our shareholders and creating uh, value for our shareholders. So quite a simplistic view. 
points of present around Australia, uh, obviously through all the key agricultural areas around Australia. Um, I'll show you a matrix soon on some uh, gaps in our coverage. And yeah, 177 year, years later, with multiple acquisitions of multiple companies over the years, uh, should uh, elders have any gaps at all? No, do we? Yes, we've got lots of gaps. So it's, uh, it's great uh, from an opportunity viewpoint. And when we look at uh, proximity to growth markets, and there's a lot of parallel between elders' position and Australia's position in agribusiness, uh, great proximity to the key uh, uh, ASEAN and China growth markets, and, uh, and a great opportunity to take advantage of that for the benefit of our client base. Now, the eight-point plan, the only point I'll make around it, because it's very much an operational plan, is the centre circle. And we did something, uh, we did something that public listed companies never do, and that is two years ago we said FY17 will be making 60 million EBIT and 20% ROC. So what happens there, uh, and I was heartened a little, by, a little by the Murray Goldwyn experience, what happens there if you don't hit it, the CEO goes. But because of the Murray Goldwyn experience, it's the CEO and the CFO, so at least I'll have company. <laughs> but, <laughs> But the, uh, the, the point of it is that uh, a business like Elders should be able to do that. We can't invest back in our client services and our uh, innovation and, and our local community activity without being profitable. And so it's very, very important for us to be making money. The other point I'll make about the eight-point plan is that uh, we got rid of all consultants, got 40 of our senior people together, and we, uh, we made the eight-point plan ourselves. And uh, the, on our, on our um, employee engagement surveys, we're top 10% of Australian companies in terms of engagement uh, and, uh, and being part of it all. So, uh, and that's around the fact that our team actually did it and it wasn't some kind of high paid clown from outside the industry uh, giving, getting a lot of money from us to tell us uh, wrong decisions. Not that I have a strong view on that. <laughs> okay, uh, on the um, priority side, uh, the um, so eight-point plan flows into my objectives and everyone else's objectives and the priorities, as you'd expect. The, the, the only point I'd make on this slide is the first one, the safety performance, uh, and uh, that is that uh, yeah, the, I've always found in every business I've run, safety parallels profitability. So businesses that are unsafe aren't run properly, people don't care about each other, there's no teamwork, there's no processes, there's so, no systems. And so there's a direct correlation between safety and profitability, and I'm sure that applies to your businesses as well. Uh, we, we just have a really simple view, and I've had it in every business I've run, and, and we have it at Elders, and, and that is that no one should go to work with any expectation of getting hurt. And, uh, you know, I, I, could, uh, I, I could give a tip to everybody on that, as the top of my finger's missing, uh, but uh, it, it's just inappropriate and it's wrong. And so we've gone from 20 foot, we use lost time injury as the, the banner measure, even though there's a bunch of other measures we use. Uh, so we've gone from 24, year one, to 12, year two, uh, and similar to my experience running other companies, 12, year three, and now we're at two after nine months. So, you know, safety, having a safe environment uh, is a profitable business, and also with, uh, and it applies exactly to animal welfare, exactly to animal welfare. So, you know, the prospect of uh, having a supply chain where, where animals are treated badly, apart from being wrong and, and driving to the core of your belief, your belief and values, uh, it's unprofitable. So just a, a very quick point on that. So going through financial progress, so I always like to say it, and I particularly like to say it last uh, Wednesday night, uh, you know, just look at the scoreboard because people can say anything and, and silver tongues can do a good job on convincing people. Uh, so what's happened since FY13, $48 million loss. Uh, at the, uh, uh, that was the year that we, uh, at the end of that year, we made the decision to become a pure play agribusiness. Agri uh, 20, uh, 27 million profit the next year. Uh, 20, uh, 45 the next year, uh, half year this year at 25 and the market consensus with analysts is around 50 and then next year we've got our FY17 eight point plan target of 60. So the pathway is pretty good. But my only gripe with it is that I was chairman when we announced the $50 million loss <laughs> and then the new chairman got to announce all these successes. So that was, but that happens. Okay, so um, in terms of product by segment gap analysis, um, if you, uh, and th things we do in the business are very methodical and very clinical and, and uh, evidence-based. Uh, so across uh, all the products and services, across all the uh, market segments, you can see the targets there, multiple gaps for elders, and uh, if you uh, particularly look at the uh, horticultural uh, segments across the board there, uh, high opportunity for growth, and uh, that, that is our very, very strong intention in terms of supporting innovative products, uh, using the online community to get direct feedback and ensuring that we can uh, be part of, uh, of assisting both the export markets but also productivity uh, improvement in the industry. 
Um, in, in terms of global opportunities, again, just a really quick slide, because Elder's position parallels Australia's position largely. Okay, so we know all the story about ASEAN and China markets. We know there's great, grow, great uh, growth opportunities, but it's around doing it properly and taking advantage of it. And you know, all of us, uh, all of us have seen state governments uh, and federal governments, for that matter, uh, have boom times and not put anything away and not being able to invest then in the future. So we're coming into a period in agribusiness where, where we've got a similar, similar uh, uh, platform and I think we've just got to learn from the past both as companies, smaller businesses and as an industry. So uh, again, I'll just move really quickly now so that uh, we can uh, have a couple of questions. In terms of, uh, I think th this has been spoken about, you're aware of the, uh, the horticultural, um, the uh, a split uh, uh, and the contribution of uh, horticulture to Australian uh, agricultural production. Yeah, the third largest, but the largest employer, third largest uh, um, revenue, but largest employer. Uh, you know, 30,000 growers in this data, and uh, 30, was it 35 commodity groups. So that may drive a little bit of fragmentation and different views and arguing, but I'm sure that wouldn't happen in any of the groups that are here at this conference. But uh, very fragmented, so to get a single voice is really, really difficult. Uh, the opportunities, uh, uh, clear opportunities, and the amount of export of uh, horticultural product, uh, there's significant upside, particularly proximity to the key markets with the right infrastructure and the, and the right uh, distribution channels abroad. In terms of the industry challenges, uh, we heard some uh, earlier this morning, the normal uh, usual suspects in terms of industry challenges uh, in agriculture, where it's season, where it's um, labour costs, input costs, uh, social licence to operate, uh, so, so there are, there are uh, lots of challenges, although I, I, it is an interesting observation, in broadacre agriculture, where productivity has flattened since about 1997, there's actually productivity improvements being driven through horticultural areas, so it's uh, quite a, an interesting uh, uh, difference that, it, that has occurred there. Um, the, uh, probably jump over the next couple to get to the, uh, to get to uh, some questions. The, in terms of the pro horticultural market and Australian uh, market, we're, we're primed. There's no doubt. We're primed. It's making the right decisions. Uh, in terms of Elder's position, uh, as you saw from the gap analysis, we're looking to invest significantly in those uh, areas of temperate tropical horticulture. We already have a uh, strong position, but we want to uh, have a stronger position through adding significant value and through uh, the investments we're making. Uh, I mentioned the Elders online community, so all of you are invited to, uh, to join into it and log on to it. And, uh, and this is real-time feedback in product development. We're working with suppliers to, to ensure that they can also have access to this sort of feedback. Uh, probably the final uh, final comment uh, from the Elders Front is the uh, iconic uh, red notebook, which has been digitalised and is now available uh, uh, online as uh, as uh, as the market's been uh, heading this way. And, and then, in summary, you know, we've um, turnaround phase is completed for Elders. Um, we're now moving to growth phase. We're determined to invest heavily uh, in uh, in better outcomes, innovation, services, products uh, for. Uh, for our producer clients around Australia and work closely with our suppliers to assist there. Uh, the fundamentals of both the industry and elders are very, very strong, as I think you'd agree. And uh, really, now, now's the time to take advantage of that. So thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll ask for questions from... Yeah. So uh, are there any...